Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to ship your Pokemon cards like a pro and for the cheapest way possible. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. You're watching the channel, Dr. Applesauce 2. My name's Will. It's another beautiful day here in Texas. I hope you guys know that I love you, God loves you, and that there is an awesome plan for your life. Something that's going to happen inevitably for 90% of us that collect Pokemon cards is at some point in time, we're gonna sell a Pokemon card or two or 10 or 100, or we're gonna trade a Pokemon card, or we're gonna send somebody Pokemon cards as a gift. And if you're going to do that, Pokemon cards are very fragile. Obviously, they're pieces of shiny cardboard. So you need to know how to ship them properly and safely because mail handling is not the best and safest thing in the world. So I have perfected a process and a system to ship your Pokemon cards as safe as possible for as cheap as possible. And today I'm gonna teach that to you. If you're excited for this video or you wanna learn or you're just a huge Pokemon nerd and you like my content, do me a favor guys, smash that like button, comment down below and watch the videos all the way through. When you do those things and you subscribe to the channel, it helps so much and it's absolutely free for you guys to do. And I'm I'm gonna be telling you guys about a lot of different products that I use. There will be links in the description below for all of these products. So first thing we gotta start with is we gotta have, we gotta have some Pokemon cards, right? So I picked some nicer Pokemon cards. These aren't like incredibly expensive, but they're nice, right? We got Jesse and James, uh, full art trainer from Hidden Fates. We got Umbreon V, a full art from Evolving Skies. We have a Nidoking base set unlimited and an Illustrator Charizard, all pretty cool, right? So the first thing that you want is you want some sleeves. These are the sleeves that I use. Literally, I just bought these. They're penny sleeves and they're actually a penny a piece. A hundred sleeves for a dollar. Uh, I think I bought a thousand and it was like 11 bucks or 12 bucks, something like that for a thousand. Uh, so you definitely can pick these up on Amazon. Uh, like I said, everything will be linked in the description below. You want some sleeves. You've got to have sleeves. If you don't have those, use some old ETB sleeves that you have. Those work fine in a pinch, but these are better, but these also work. It's better than not having a sleeve at all. And so what you want to do is you want to take all your cards and you're going to simply whatever cards you're shipping uh you're going to put them boom in a sleeve just like that super easy right now the next thing that you have to do and this part is incredibly important is you can't just ship your card in a sleeve like this you've got to put it in some type of rigid or semi-rigid uh, container, something to keep it safe. So there's a few options that you have. The most times when I sell things or I ship things, I'm gonna ship them in top loaders. Just a simple semi or a simple simple little top loader like this, okay? So if you wanna get yourself some top loaders, this is what I buy. Uh, there's all kinds of different sizes. You don't have to buy a hundred, but I buy these on Amazon, okay? And uh, they're not super expensive. This hundred pack actually comes with some sleeves. You can buy smaller packs that have like 20, 25 in them. So you definitely want to, uh, to to get yourself some top loaders and what you do with your top loader is you just boom uh take your pokemon card and some of this might be common sense for some of y'all but you know some of y'all might not know that now boom right there in the top loader it's nice and rigid uh and it works really really well the other option if you want to do this and i actually i recommend uh using top loaders if you're shipping but uh, you can use these, you can use semi-rigids. I recommend using semi-rigids if you're storing your cards or sending your cards to grade. These are Kanto Shark semi-rigids. They're my favorite brand of semi-rigids. Uh, and you can find those at cantoshark.com. If you use code applesauce, you'll save five bucks and you put them in the semi-rigids. Now, they bet they're good to ship these in, but they can bend a little bit. I like to store all of my cards in semi-rigids. I like to ship my cards in top loaders, but you can use either, uh, or you can use card saver, uh, uh, card savers and card savers are used a lot as well so that'll be linked in the description below as well if you want to order it from amazon i do recommend using top loaders uh or using the canto shark uh, semi-rigids right here, but that's your next step. Okay, now that you have everything in a top loader or a semi-rigid, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do, and there might be some debate as to this, but I'm telling you the way to protect everything, streamlined, easiest way possible, is you're gonna wanna put your cards that you're shipping in a team bag. These are the team bags that I use. You can find these on Amazon, and it's really, really simple. Literally, boom, you, you take a team bag. Uh, people also use these to put their slabs in uh, and things of that nature. Uh, you take your team bag, super simple, bada bing, bada boom you take your cards okay and there's two reasons why we do this we have all of our cards okay now all of our cards are together and if you're doing booster packs or whatever you can do that too uh you slip your cards in your team bag 
and then you peel that off and then you take your team bag and you fold it closed all the way. Now this serves two purposes. The first purpose is all of your cards are together. The second purpose is you haven't had to put any type of tape over the top of it. Your cards are not going to come out because your team bag is sealed. Now, for whatever reason, you don't have a team bag. You can, a lot of people will use painter's tape across the top or a little bit of, um, not scotch tape, uh, a little bit of masking tape along the top. That works as well, but I do prefer a team bag just because it keeps it all nice and tight and looks really nice and professional. And they're very, very cheap and very affordable to pick up on Amazon. Okay, the next thing is an option. This is an option. I never ship like this, but you could do this if you're just shipping one or two really cheap cards in the Magic the Gathering community that I actually, I play Magic a lot. Uh, people do this all the time and it's a little more acceptable, but like I said, this is an option. I never ship this way, but if you were just shipping one or two cards that were worth three or four bucks, this is an option, okay? You take everything that you've done. This is called the PWE uh, method or the plain white envelope method. Take everything that you've done, okay? If you just got your one card or your two cards in a team bag or taped up with uh, masking tape or painter's tape, uh, and then you literally, you put them in the plain white envelope, you close it, you address it and you ship it. Uh, and that is a risky method, but a lot of people will ship that way. Honestly, if I ship these like this, they'd probably be okay, but this is not how I typically ship, but a lot of people will go that option for a cheaper shipping method on cheaper cards. And I'll have a link down below for some envelopes if you want to do that. Here's the method that I ship the vast majority of cards that I sell or trade. I do do Wednesday night live streams where I either give away stuff or I do breaks for people on YouTube. And this is the method that I use the vast majority of the time. Okay, so we have our cards all team back, uh, top loaded, sleeved up, all good stuff like that. I use six by 10 bubble mailers. And you might think, oh my gosh, that's a big bubble mailer. It is a little bit bigger. Uh, they're cheap. And I'm going to tell you why I use the six by 10. Uh, this is what I use, um, unless it's really, really, really expensive. If it's, or if it's a whole bunch of cards, if it's a whole bunch of cards or it's really, really expensive, I'll use a six by six by two box or for slabs. But the vast majority of the time I'm using this six by 10 envelope from Uline or bubble mailer. It doesn't have to be from Uline. I had to go to Staples and get some the other day, but a six by 10 bubble mailer. And I'm going to tell you why I use the six by 10. Okay. But the first thing that I do, we have everything slabbed up and sleeved up and, uh, in top loaders. I use these hobby armors right here. These things are sick guys. These things are absolute lifesavers. You can get a whole box of them. I think a hundred of them is 15 bucks. Again, these will be linked down below. Uh, everything that I use, I'm just linking y'all the links that I use when I buy them. Uh, these will be linked below. I think it's 15 bucks for a hundred. These are awesome, 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 awesome. If you can't afford those, you can cut yourself out a little piece of cardboard uh, that's a little bit bigger than a card and that works in a pinch. But if you're shipping a lot of Pokemon cards, it's a real big pain in the butt to be cutting those out all the time. Don't ask me how I know that. So buy yourself some of these hobby armors. These are sick. They're very, very rigid. Uh, and I'll use one unless it's a really, really, really expensive card. Then maybe I'm either using the box or if it's a little bit more expensive, I'll use two. But typically I'll just use one and this is how I'm going to do it. You can use one or two, however you want to do it. This is why I use the six by 10. Okay. We'll take our six by 10. We've got our hobby armor right here. Okay. We got the hobby armor on the back side. We're going to put the six, the cards in the six by 10. If there's a shipping receipt or tracking or anything that I need inside, I put that on the inside as well. We're going to take and we're going to fold boom. And then we're going to open it up. Boom. And then we're going to seal boom. Okay. Now, the reason I use these six by tens is because they're affordable, they're very durable. And now what I've done by folding it is I have one layer with the hobby armor and then I have the other side with a double fat sided piece of bubbles. Very, very well protected and a perfect place to put a label, bada bing, bada boom, right there. That's why I use the six by tens. You don't have to use six by tens. You can use other sizes, but these are the ones that I use and I will link them down below. That's how I prefer to do it, to fold it over, get yourself a little bit of extra protection. And like I said, if I'm shipping a lot of cards or just some really ridiculously expensive cards or a bunch of slabs, one slab I'll probably put in something like this if it's not super expensive. But it, it, otherwise I'm gonna use a six by six Six by two box. We're going to open that bad boy up and then I'm just going to slap my cards right in there. Typically I'm not going to use the envelope, but I'm going to slap the cards right in there. A little bit of bubbles, close it up. 
and then they're gonna arrive very, very well protected. All right, you've got everything packed up and you're like, hey, I'm gonna take it to the post office and drop it off. Wrong, you're gonna waste money if you go to the post office. Don't ever go to the post office with your package and say, hey, I need to ship this because they're gonna charge you out the nose. Go to pirateship.com, create an account and use that system. It is so simple and so easy. All you need is your package and you need to scale like this one right here. Uh, it maybe costs like 20 bucks. You weigh your package. I'll link that scale in the description below for your convenience you weigh your package uh, you have the weight you measure it with a little tape measure and then you put those dimensions in on pirateship.com and they give you great great discounts you can track all of your orders in the one place 100 use pirate ship so many places use pirate ship so many places recommend it and then when you have your your package ready to go you don't have to go wait in line at the post office you can just go drop it off saves you time saves you money pirate ship 100 use that and if you are going to be printing up a lot of labels get one of these rollo printers that's what i use it's 200 bucks it is an investment but if you're going to be printing a bunch of labels it is a game changer now if you're just going to be printing up a label every once in a while just use your printer and print up a label and that's no big deal but pirateship.com is a life changer if you don't have to wait in line at the post office you're going to be getting better shipping rates it is so much better you can actually log in and put people like give people an accurate shipping quote if that's something that they want if they're like hey i need to know exactly how much shipping will be you can okay address weight blah 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 boom screenshot there you go and they can pay you exactly that so pirateship.com use a rollo printer if you're going to be shipping a lot of packages and that's how i ship 99 percent of my cards and uh they've always you know worked out very 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 well let me know down in the comments below how you ship cards or if you like this if you learned anything from this definitely give the video a thumbs up comment below and subscribe and like i said we do all those things it helps the channel so much and again Again, this is just the method in the process that I've come up with that has worked for me very, very, very well. I hope it works for you. And if you're a huge Pokemon nerd like I am, check out that video right there. I know you'll love it. And like I always say, find somebody to love and serve today and be the change you want to see in the world. We'll see you next time.